You're still watching Ways. Now, today is World Tuna Day. It is observed on the 2nd of May and was established by the United Nations to raise awareness about the importance of tuna fish. Um, the day was first observed in 2017. Now, according to UN, approximately 7 million tons of tuna and tuna-like species are landed yearly. World Tuna Day is observed every year to highlight the importance of tuna fish to the marine ecosystem and the global economy. Who is a tuna lover here? I love tuna fish. I mean, the can, the, the, the tin version. Mm. Uh, I've never had it like straight out of the water, the river or ocean and fresh. fresh. Yeah. No, you I've never, I've had, never it had it fresh. And I don't think I'll like it. I like just the bait. I don't even like salmon. Mm, yeah. I love salmon. So, I, I mean, I, I like the, the basic fish, like catfish and really? tilapia, yes. <laughs> I think the so, only seafood I like is prawn. Only. I love fish. prawns. Okay. Well. I'm not. I, I'm not a fish girl. I don't like fish. I love. And fish. They, they, this, boil, this fish is they're boil, actually quite like warm-blooded, yes. and mm. they they move with the dolphins, you know. Okay. And all of that, quite okay. nice. I mean, it's a it's a money spinner. You know, oh, so they're just raising the awareness about the in fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what did you find for us? You see in the news today. Okay, in the news today, I found out that the, um, the WHO, um, who World Health Organization, uh, is um, panicking over the fact that um, if the, the pandemic may worsen after the easing of lockdown. And this is as a result of the fact that um, Ghana has already recorded it. You know, Ghana has already recorded they the fact their that, that they eased their lockdown. And 11 days after Ghana recorded, uh, after they locked, um, eased yeah. their lockdown, yeah. Ghana recorded that they had um, about 60% increase in individuals that were infected with COVID-19. So I see to the fears of uh, the WHO. WHO, and I think it's, um, it is quite valid. It, and another thing is this, it could also overwhelm the workers, basically, the health workers who are already overwhelmed. Mm. So I think this lockdown, we should be very careful. We Isn't should do it? the I think that's what we're and, talking about today. So yes. hopefully we'll be able to understand it from mm -hmm. all aspects. How about you, Sansi? What did you find? Right. Today? So um, I found uh, in, in the news, this is from um, Newswire uh, NGR. And uh, so a 70-year-old man and two others that are under 30 have been arrested. The reason being that they insulted the president of, they created a viral, a viral video insulting the president of Nigeria and um, um, the executive gov governor of Katsina State, um, um, I mean, Be uh, Bello. So, but that's not just the news. Um, I, I highlighted it because I noticed a trend on social media where it's like, um, people just, because the biggest word right now is palliatives, both people who understand mm. it and people who do not, do not understand, understand it. And people <laughs> feel that because, let's say, the government is not meeting up with your expectations based on palliatives and, you know, putting out measures to help the situation, that it's an avenue for you to go out and insult, insult the president. Them. No. I was watching videos upon videos on YouTube, and there was mm -hmm. even this particular guy, he's in UK, mm -hmm. and he, he released a video on YouTube because um, he was giving a palliative in... Um, in UK, of which is worth about 300,000 naira, that's in Nigerian currency. currency. So he was calling out and saying all sorts of abusive words, calling out on the federal government and the executives and all that. He's and a person, like, no, a white man. You, no, he's a Nigerian, but I oh think he's in, in, in the UK or so. But he mm. said, even if they want to deport him, that he's never coming back. And that's wrong. No matter how your views, I think there are, there are ways you can voice out your opinion without insulting people. Absolutely. Exactly. Especially people I, like I agree both with you 100%. And, uh, but I just want you to understand. Older than you. Right. Well, I agree with you 100%. Nigeria mm -hmm. will take all this age. Don't bring age matters. You are a leader. <laughs> but I, I also think that leaders also mm -hmm. must be ready to stomach anything. Because at this point, a lot of people are, are, are apprehensive. Upset. You know the kind of insults that Donald Trump receives on a daily basis. Do you know how many insults <laughs> that a lot of people are receiving? However, yeah. what caught my attention in that story? So you were able to fish out the people that created that, that video. Yeah. How, um, the guys that were washing their hands that I've been talking about on this table, mm -hmm. that washed their hands insulting uh, oh, yes, coronavirus uh, in house language as well. and drinking the water that if they burn corona, corona should come, corona can never come near them. Mm. Nobody has told me that they've arrested those people. So I'm waiting for the arrest. I mean, they insulted corona. No, 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 no. That's you not can't... the issue. That is actually a very misleading video because it means that you're downplaying the severity of coronavirus. Okay. 
of the so viruses. So that is actually when they say but did, hate, did they now, break any rules? When you say hate speech and all those things, those are the kind of people you They're should target. They're misleading. They're people. misleading the that's, the larger population. What, it's not about breaking rules. Many people will die because of that act. That's Be, what I'm saying. Because that, I wish Lani that, was here. Is there a place in the constitution like a, where you can it, it, it arrest is, people it for doing is that? It's like fake news already. It is the people fake are, news the people are already. already ignorant, and you're giving them the information that it's like hey, if I come on on social media and say, you know what? I don't care. Corona is not real. It's my conviction. No, I, I am that's, wrong. That's yes, that's what but the it British is call infodemic. It's it's fake news. It's wrong. It's oh, you know what. Fancy. You can't win this argument. I see things from a different perspective. Let's just put it Please that way. Because there is human playing, rights. I think you're just playing the devil's advocate in this I'm, I'm not. I, 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 actually, I genuinely that believe I, what I'm telling you. It's human rights. I have a right to say, you know what, this is, this is what I believe. But you I don't believe. have a right to mislead people. people. I'm not, listen, when I'm doing it, I'm not doing it in the intention of misleading people. I'm putting out my conviction out there. It's and your you choice. wash your hands. It is your choice listen, to be misled. Listen to the video I said. You wash your hands mm -hmm. in the bowl and drink and the water. And drank it. Come on. Is it you that is drinking it? Is the only time my stomach is entering? No. <laughs> no don't I don't know. get it. That's, should, that's, the that's, person should have just drank that's it all and shades left of wrong. it like that, not filming it. So can I take my story now? Oh yes. Go ahead. So quickly to mention that um, we just got reports <laughs> that the Emir of um, uh, Rano, is it, it's supposed to be Kano, right? It, um, Tafida Abubakar Ilya is dead. He died oh, at the age of 74. Mm -hmm. Although they had not um, said what caused the death. So we're waiting to hear what caused the death at mm -hmm. the age of 75. Verbal autopsy, perhaps? Of, of, well, they, anyway, I hope they do the autopsy, sad. but you know, they hardly do autopsy in this country. Mm -hmm. My and story that I was going to take Muslim. today He'll was. Be um, Oh. My story that I was going to take today is linked to um, Dow Communications. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so um, he, the owner of the the company, tested positive, and alongside nine, I think um, five, five members. seven members of, of his, his family, family tested positive. Okay, so why I took this story was because yesterday when I was watching the presidential tax um, force, the briefing. Uh, press briefing yesterday, one mm -hmm. of the reporters of his company came out to say that. Um, because of the news of this, them testing positive, right. that a lot of stigmatization had been going on and all of that. So that um, so she was calling on the presidential task force to look into that matter and try to help them sensitize people, you know, not to mm. start to stigmatize the company and saying that, oh, because mm. your, your boss and some members of his family tested positive, it mm. means all of you are now start treating and them, now positive yeah. like pushing well. them aside and all of that. So, right. I, I mean, this is a very, it's, it's um, a sensitive times that we're we're at. Uh, mm -hmm. It would be nice to show love and consideration, right? Let's mm -hmm. let's not let's, let's not make this a stigma no, a stigmatization no, no. I, at, I, at all. Yeah. I also believe that um, people should um, take this into cognizance that it's not anybody's fault. It can happen to, to anyone. Anybody. Right. So absolutely. we should be very careful yeah, absolutely. with what we say. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So Osagie on. <laughs> <laughs> Onaiwu and um, Uti Elu joins us right after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.